Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video I'm going to talk about the Intel's next generation processor that's known as Ivy Bridge. Just recently in the second week of September 2011, Intel unveiled a lot of details about this new processor called Ivy Bridge. Though Ivy Bridge is the new architecture, throughout this video I'll be addressing the new chips that will be coming on the Ivy Bridge architecture as Ivy Bridge chips and the earlier chips that were based on the Sandy Bridge uh, architecture as Sandy Bridge chips to make this video easier to understand. And I talk about what this new Ivy Bridge brings to the table and what benefits it can bring to you and me as an end consumer. The current crop of Core i chips, that's the i3, i5 and the i7 uh, chips are based on the Sandy Bridge architecture, that's the 32 nanometer architecture. And the new architecture that's known as Ivy Bridge is based on 22 nanometer. By moving from 32 nanometer to 22 nanometer, what Intel could do is pack in more transistors on the chip. And currently, basically, the Sandy Bridge chip that's on the 32 nanometer has about 1.16 billion transistors. On the other hand, the new IV Bridge can pack 1.4 billion transistors. Also, by moving to the 22 nanometer, Intel has lowered the power consumption and the heat produced by the chip. And that's good news for ultra portables and laptops. The other good thing is that these new IV Bridge chips are again. Uh, socket 1155 the same as the sandy bridge chips so what this does is that many of the current sandy bridge motherboards can easily support this new iv bridge by simply doing a bios upgrade for example gigabyte has just recently announced that all its six series motherboards will be compatible with the new iv bridge chips by simply doing a bios upgrade so if you're using a Sandy Bread chip and in the future if you would like to upgrade to the Ivy Bread chip, you might not need to change the motherboard but just do a BIOS upgrade. So just check with your motherboard manufacturer for, your, for the support of these new Ivy Bread chips. So basically as this slide shows, basically Ivy Bread's Sandy Bridge migrated to 22 nanometer technology and one of the biggest advantages this Ivy Bridge has over Sandy Bridge chips is that in Ivy Bridge, the graphic performance is approximately 60% more compared to Sandy Bridge chips. Also, Ivy Bridge is DirectX 11 compatible. And these chips will be ideal for uh, Ultrabooks and thin and light computers like MacBook Air. Ivy Bridge will also bring native support for USB 3. You might be uh, asking that USB 3 is already available uh, on some of the mid to higher end motherboards. But the thing is that uh, currently the manufacturers have to add another external third party chip to give the USB 3 support. With Ivy Bridge it will be provided with the default chipset. Apart from providing support for the old chipsets like H67, P67, the Z68, uh, Intel is also going to inc introduce new chipsets called the H77, Z75 and the Z77 for the Ivy Bridge. Expect the Ivy Bridge chips to launch between the first and the second quarter of 2012. So if you already own a Sandy Bridge chip, expect the CPU performance to increase about 8-10% to 10 with this new Ivy Bridge. But the big breakthrough is with the integrated uh, GPU. Expect uh, speed boosts up to 60%. So in terms of raw performance, Ivy Bridge won't bring much to a desktop computer, but for a mobile computer like a laptop or an ultra portable, this will be a great chip. And we can expect to see even quad core processors in thin and light laptops like MacBook Air and ultra portables, thanks to this Ivy Bridge. I hope you found this video helpful. If you found it helpful, please click on the like button given below. That's it for now. This is Ranjit for tech2bus.com and hopefully I'm going to see you in my next video.